Hi, I'm Josh. We're going to be doing a walkthrough on a 2024 King Air 4596 today. Okay, so our first panel here is our HWH leveling jack touch panel. This will deploy all your jacks and level your coach for you. Um, first button that you would have to push would be auto level. When the blue light's blinking, uh, what that means is it is going to dump all the air in the coach. It's on a timer. So when the air is finished dumping, the jacks will start to deploy. So the buzzer that's going off right now is uh, the warning uh, buzzer for the jacks that are deployed uh, because the ignition is on right now. If the ignition was off, then the buzzer would not be going. So right now, uh, each red light represents uh, one jack. And right now they're all deployed. The amber light is towards the rear, indicating that we're low in the back. Once all the amber lights go out, you are, you'll be leveled. Okay, so now the coach is all level. Uh, if we wanted to manually lift the front, uh, we could push this arrow here. This is the front of the coach. Uh, the up will raise the front of the jacks. If we go down to uh, this button here, uh, we can raise the rear of the coach. We can also raise or retract the sides by hitting the side ones. When you hit these buttons, they will always deploy two jacks at a time, either a front and a rear uh, or the side to side jacks. To auto store, simply just push the auto store button. And when all the jacks are retracted, all the red lights will go out. You have to have the ignition on or an accessory for this panel to light up and function for the jacks. And if you need to cancel a function, simply just push cancel. Or we can go back into the auto store. After the last jack comes up, your auto level uh, will be or your auto store will be on a timer uh, and then cut off automatically. The green light means travel mode. Okay, the next touchpad would be the Allison transmission touchpad. Uh, on here we have uh, reverse, uh, neutral, and drive. Uh, we also have a mode button. The different modes will change the different shift points of the transmission. By pressing the up and down arrows at the same time, you can get a transmission oil level. So the next button would be the tag dump switch. There are three positions on the tag dump switch. You have auto, uh, which is all the way forward. Center is disable. And then all the way back would be manual, which is momentary. And what the tag dump switch does is in auto, it will automatically dump the air in the tag axle when you're in reverse. Center will disable it. And then manual will manually dump the air in the tag axle. Just while you hold the switch. Yeah. Just while you hold the switch momentarily. Second switch would be the engine brake switch. You have an on or an off. We have the engine brake high, medium, and low switch. Uh, the high setting will uh, slow your, your coach down 
the fastest when you take your foot off the accelerator. Medium will be a medium and low uh, will be the lowest setting for slowing your coach down uh, when you take your foot off the accelerator. Next we have the parking brake. Push in to disengage the parking brake and pull out to engage the parking brake. The red switch up here would be your mirror defrosts. When it's lit up, uh, your uh, mirrors will go into defrost, but you also have to have the ignition on for the defrost to work. The button over here is the mirror um, location switch. Uh, the center switch is for the left mirror. If you push that over, you can go left, right, up, and down. And you, when you push it all the way over to the right, you can move the right mirror left, right, up, and down. The switch below the parking brake would be the uh, automatic headlight switch. So when you put it into automatic, they automatically come on when you have the ignition on. If you push down, then it's off. The switch next to the automatic headlight switch would be the manual headlight switch. So if we turn that off, we have the headlights on, running lights, and then off. The next switch we have would be the fog lights. Up is on. Press down to turn it off. This switch would be the bright switch and dim switch for the switches in the cockpit. Pushing all the way down will dim them. Pushing all the way up will turn them on their brightest setting. Then we have the dome switch which would be the dome light above the cockpit seat. And then the next switch to that would be the, uh, the uh, automatic head, uh, would be the automatic high beam switch, which is controlled by the mobile eye. So turning it down, or pushing it down would be canceling it and hitting the top would enable it so that when you have cars coming at you, uh, it'll automatically turn off your bright lights. This switch is the automatic tra traction control override switch. So if you're ever in a situation where you need a little bit of extra traction, you would hit the switch and it allows you to get more traction in your rear. Uh, but you don't want to leave it on all the time. So after you use it, you would make sure you want to turn it back off. The next switch would be the uh, the, the cockpit um, driver's window switch. Pushing forward will open the window, and pushing back will close the window. The next switch is the air horn switch. All the way down is just a normal horn. All the way forward would be the air horns. The next switch to this is the battery boost switch. And you'll notice there's a house, uh, there's a house side to it and a chassis side to the switch. Basically what that means is if your batteries are dead, um, on the, if your house batteries are dead, you can hit the chassis side of it, which will use the uh, battery power from the chassis batteries to uh, boost your house side. And then vice versa, if your chassis batteries are dead, if you touch the house side, the uh, the house batteries will charge up the chassis batteries. And basically what that does is just enable your charge bridge 
uh, but it's powered from both sides of the house and the chassis battery. And then the last switch over here would be the heavy tow switch, um, which when you turn that on, uh, changes settings in the suspension. If you're towing a heavy stacker trailer or um, other heavy tow vehicles. So this is the Curtis brake control switch. The dial adjusts how much braking control you control on the trailer that you're pulling. Okay, next we have the steering wheel. So over on the left hand side, these buttons here. Uh, so these, when you're getting a phone call, uh, you can uh, answer or end a phone call with these buttons. The ones below that would be for your wipers. Uh, to turn on your wipers, simply press this button here. Uh, for your wa wiper washer fluid, you would press this button over here. And then to turn them off, uh, you can press the center button. And then to go through the high-low settings would be the bottom button. The button cluster down below here would be for your radio controls. So these buttons to the far left and right um, go through your uh, tuning of the radio. This would be your play pause button. Um, this is the source button to go through the radio. In the middle you have a mute button and then you have the two volume buttons here. These two outside buttons would be your ICC flashlights. These would be for the the ICC clearance lights and then this would be flashing your front headlights. The next button cluster over here would be for the dash class dash screen control. Uh, hitting the home button will take you back to the home screen. The middle would be the OK button and then the side button here would be the back button and then you also have up and down buttons. So on the glass dash screen if we hit the up button and we go to air leveling if you hit OK, it'll take you to the air leveling functions. And if we go to auto level and press OK, it will start to auto level the coach on air using the air suspension. If we go back into air leveling, we can go down, we can toggle down through the different functions of travel, re-level, raise all, lower all, or more. And if we go into more, we can manually control how we want to level the coach. You could do uh, all, you could do uh, front left, front, front right, right, right front, rear, rear left, left, override, and previous. Um, if we wanted to raise the front, we would go down to front and hit OK, and then hit OK for raise. And it will raise the front. If we want to lower the front, we would go down to lower and hit OK. And it'll lower the front. Then we can go back 
to if we wanted to auto level we can press OK and raise all now we're automatically auto leveling on the air suspension And then to go back to home, just go down to exit, and then we're back to the home screen on air leveling. The next screen would be the brightness. This would be the brightness of the glass dash. You can adjust that from zero to 100%. Press the up and down buttons to toggle through the percentages. Hit OK to save. The next page would be the message page. This is if you would getting, were getting any faults or errors. The one below would be the settings page. From here you can adjust, or from here you can look at your TPMS readout. It gives you all your tire pressures uh, shows the sensor IDs, the pressures, the temperatures, uh, leak detection, your reference pressure, the reference temperature, and then the status of OK. The next page would be the trip setting. This will show you your fuel used, your average speed, the instant economy, miles per gallon, and the average economy, miles per gallon. Okay. So this would be the info center. You can toggle through the engine load, engine oil temp, the boost, transmission temperature, engine percentage torque, exhaust temperature. You can do a scan. And then you also have your door status, which will show uh, any doors that are open and also your entry step. The next one down would be your TPMS. That shows you all your tire pressure values. And if you have any alarms, they will show in red. And the one, the last one on the list would be the active cruise control. Uh, this shows the setting of the active cruise control, which you can change. If you go into it, you can change your distance from long to medium to short or disable it. These are the gauges that are on the screen. You have a fuel gauge, uh, a temperature gauge, a oil pressure gauge. Uh, you have a uh, two air tank gauges and then your depth fluid gauge also with a speedometer and your tachometer. Uh, and then the two lines in the center would be for the mobile eye, uh, which will also come up on the, the Excite screen. So on the side of the steering wheel, you have these four paddles over here. Uh, the first one is your comfort steer setting. You can raise and lower the comfort steer by pushing it up or down. Uh, going up to the highest level to number five and then you can also go down to the lowest level which would be on number one setting. The paddle below that is going to be your pedal location for the brake and the gas pedal. Pulling up is going to 
bringing the pedals to you and pushing down is going to push them further away. On the left side of the steering wheel, you have the top paddle is going to be the telescoping. Pulling up brings up the steering wheel and pushing down lowers the steering wheel. And the bottom one will be the tilt of the steering wheel. Pulling up lowers it and pushing back raises it. Then we have the turn signal, um, cruise control stock, pushing forward turns on the right turn signal, pulling back turns on the left. Cruise control, you have the cruise control switch, which would be off, on, and resume. When you are on on, and you hit set and in idle, it'll raise you into high idle. And then also pulling up on it will toggle through, toggle between your bright and your dim headlights. On the memory setting controls, you have three the three settings. Uh, you can set between three drivers if you like, but another function would be uh, to have one of the settings when you press it, would set the steering wheel uh, and this, uh, the pedals further back so it's easier to get out of the uh, captain's seat. Okay, over here on the dash buttons, we have the steering wheel heat, um, the heat grip pad. Pushing forward turns it on with the light on pressing down turns it off. The next switch here for the front fan would be the uh, for the dash heat convector, which is located over by the step well. You have to have your um, furnace enabled on the silver leaf for this to work. And you have two speeds, a high and a low speed, also an off. The next switch is the overhead fan switch. Pushing forward enables it, and you have three speeds on the overhead fans. High, medium, and low. Overhead fans are mainly used to keep the windshield uh, defrosted when uh, getting condensation on the inside of your coach. The next switch would be your docking light switch. Turning those on, you have two on both sides of the coach on the outside. Turn them off. Courtesy lights, momentary switch. Momentarily turns on and off the courtesy lights inside the coach from front to back. The next switch would be the generator start switch. Pressing up. We'll start the generator. When it's flashing, it's preheating. Then to stop the generator, you would push stop. Also, you get fault codes on the generator uh, start switch if they're if you're needing a uh, service or if there's uh, any faults with the generator, they will flash on the, on the switch. Next switch would be the entry lock switch. Pushing up is going to unlock and down will lock. And that beeping noise lets me know that there's a door or something open uh, that won't let the um, the security system uh, enable. Next switch would be the visor, the driver side visor switch. Uh, this would be the, um, this switch is the windshield visor switch. Then you have the dash shade switch 
and then the passenger visor switch. So right here we have the HVAC control, the dash HVAC control uh, dials. You have your fan switch for or your fan speed for one, two, three, and four. The AC switch, the recirculation switch, which will recirculate your cabin air, your heat control from cold to hot, and then the location of the vent fans. From foot control all the way up to the defrost. So we have the push button ignition switch, which right now is on ignition. If you press it once, it'll turn everything off. The green flashing lets me know that the key fob is not within proximity. If I press it again, now we're into accessory mode. If I press it one more time, we're in ignition. And then to start the coach, you have to press on the brake pedal, turns green, and then press the button. To shut the engine off, press the button, it goes back to off. Next we have the Excite radio. The first screen would be the radio function. You can go through AM, FM, um, tune, seek, through the ra different radio settings. Go back to, if you press menu, you go back to the main menu, you go to media center. In media center, um, you can play your uh, downloaded music, which you would, uh, you would plug into this um, USB port. And it's for Apple devices only. Uh, the next page would be the Sirius XM. You'd have to get a subscription to access this. Go back to menu. We go to Bluetooth. Once you're in Bluetooth mode and you want to pair your phone, you go down to the lower right hand corner and you would find your device or if you need to search for one you can press search and then go to your device that you want to connect to this is what you want to look for uh, in the options and then you would connect to it if you want to go back at the back we can connect to this device by pressing on that and then hitting the connect button. Um, the next one is HDMI, which we don't use on our Numar coaches. Auxiliary. Okay, next we have the camera control. Uh, over here on the left side, you have all your camera view uh, control options. This would be the front camera view, the right mirror camera view, which is a standard, uh, it would be a standard definition. Midship. Camera, camera view, the rear camera view, 
driver's side midship and left turn uh, mirror uh, camera view. Also on the rear camera views, you have the three different options on views on the rear camera. Yeah. The, the first one would be a, a fish eye view of the rear camera. Second one is more of a hitch view. And the third one is directly down in on a hitch view. Over here, we have the uh, interior camera view, which would be the camera above the front driver overhead. And then you have three trailer camera or two trailer camera views. And then the entry camera view, which is outside by the door handle. Over on the right side, we have a camera view of both midship cameras. The one below that would be the four cameras, the front, rear, and both midship. Below that would be both midship and the rear. And then the bottom right hand corner is the 360 view with a rear camera view. The next option would be the iPod uh, screen, which won't which won't light up unless you actually have an, an Apple device plugged into the auxiliary port over on the driver's side. Then we have the navigation screen. On the navigation screen, we have down here would be the menu button. And you can go through and enter uh, your route, a multi-point route. You can enter the traffic, and then you have other useful information in there. You also have the settings page in here. where you go through and enter all your route preferences, your sound settings, warnings, navigation view, uh, the regional the displays, the traffic, the weather, um, online services, start configuration wizard, and then advanced settings. And over here on the, uh, the right side monitor screen, we have a power button. Uh, we also have a settings button where you can go through to adjust the dimming auto will automatically dim it uh, with the light sensor you can dim the brightness set the contrast the color and then back to the home page the driver's overhead cabinet, on the far left, we have the WineGuard Razor control box. To use this, you just press it on. The digital display tells you how many over-the-air stations that it can pick up. The green light tells you which, which direction the stations are in. If you want to do a search, you hold down on search. The antenna is going to go through a search and it's going to locate the direction of the most channels that it's in. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, you might pick. 
This might not pick up too many channels since we're inside a building right now. The green lights show the direction that the antenna is pointing in. Once it stops searching, it's going to the lights will show you which direction the uh, most channels are in. If you need to adjust the direction, you can turn the antenna clockwise by pressing this button, or you can turn it counterclockwise by pressing this button. Also, if you're using a camp campground cable and you need your cable boost on this has to be off for cable boost off you would turn this back on this panel right here is the Gerard remote uh, the remote control for both your uh, Gerard main awnings and the Gerard entry awning. To choose which awning you want to control, you would go to the channel. Zero will control all of the awnings, the entry and both main pa patio awnings. Channel one will be the first main awning. Channel 2 will be the rear main awning, and channel 3 will be the entry awning. To run an awning out, simply press out. To stop it, press stop and in to run them in. These are lock buttons. You have an unlock and a lock, which are mainly used on the handheld remote control. If you have the remote in your pocket and you don't want to run the awnings out by accidentally pushing a button, you'd push lock. So the lock and, in and unlock are useless on this remote. But you also have a light button on the top of the left hand corner which turns the awning lights on or off. You can select which awning you want to turn the lights on and then turn them on or off. These two buttons here are the BMS on off switches for your lithium IM batteries. Uh, Right now they're both on. If you wanted to disconnect the power from your batteries, you would hold down the button until the lights go off. And then to turn them back on, you would press the buttons again until the lights come back on. Also on these BMS switches, if your batteries turn off by themselves because the batteries have lost all the, the charge in them, um, before you turn them back on, you want to make sure that you have a power source ready to charge your batteries before you turn these back on. Um, otherwise, um, they won't charge. Um, they won't be able to get up to their full capacity. Um, the next switch over here would be the driver side slide out switch. Uh, this would be the full wall slide. Pressing up will run it in and down will run it out. Passenger slide out switch, uh, up will run it in, down will run it out. 
We have the exterior LED light switch, which these would be the ground effect lights and the pass or the slide out, uh, the lights under the slide outs. Um, next is the exterior entry step switch. When it's in the off position and you open and close the door, your HWH step won't run in or out. When you turn it on, when your door is closed, your step will run in every time you open and close the door. Next is the Wi-Fi router switch. Uh, it powers the Wi-Fi router up here. Over here we have the security sensor switch. You turn these on. They are motion sensors. There are two motion sensors inside the coach, one in the kitchen and one in the bedroom. We have driver security lights. This would be the driver's side on the outside, the exterior security light and the passenger exterior security light. And then we have the driver privacy drape, which would be the driver's side drape. Also on the cockpit drapes, when the ignition is on, there is a safety cutout switch where they will only run down halfway. You can still run them up, but you won't be able to run them down that halfway point. To get them uh, to run all the way down, the ignition has to be off. The front windshield drape, the door drape, and the passenger privacy drape. Right here we have the Omniscope port, which basically uh, it would be for a technician if they need to get into your silver leaf and um, look at some of the settings on the silver leaf to either change them or um, to inspect what uh, what silver leaf is is doing. Uh, up here we have a video switch which cuts the video switch feed to the LR125, um, which goes to the router and my Rosie. So if you want uh, video feed on the inside of your coach, but you don't want it going to your router, you would turn this off. Uh, the next switch would be the HWH master reset switch. If you have any problems with your step going out or any other HWH related issues, first thing I tell my customers to do is hold that switch down. It resets or reboots the HWH system. Uh, over here we have the, um, the Wi-Fi Ranger, the router, uh, which is powered by the switch here. This coach is also uh, comes with a solar prep panel pull wire, which this yellow wire goes directly up to the roof. If you want to put a solar panel monitor up here, uh, you would uh, mount it up here and then you'd be able to have all your, your wires go directly up to the roof. So if you get to a campground and you're ready to run your slides out, uh, mainly this big hydraulic slide here, the HWH one, you want to make sure that, you know, of course we've already checked the reveal on the outside. We've already, um, check to make sure that there's no obstructions out there. We're ready to run the slide out out. You wanna make sure that your coach is aired up. You also wanna make sure that your seats clear the slide outs when you're running them out. Um, you can leave your, uh, you either wanna make sure that you're connected to shore power uh, a generator, or also you wanna make sure that your engine is running to run your HWH slide outs out. So you go over to the, the slide out button, 
press out. It's going to run out and then it'll run down and you keep your finger on the button until the pump shuts off. It doesn't matter which side you run out first. Some people like to run the passenger side slide outs out first because the coach can tend to lean one side to the other. Now it's going down. Wait for the pump to shut off. And then we can take our finger off the switch and then do the same thing for the other side. So up here in the first cabinet, we have a access panel to the back of the cabinet here, which you can get to the wires of the, of the awnings, basically, back behind the panel there. Uh, this is a awning control. Uh, you, they have three buttons on the side here. Uh, the middle is stop, and then the top one is going to be an in and the bottom one is going to be out. This one this one controls the entry awning. This one controls the rear awning. Has the same three buttons. And then this one would be for the front awning. Uh, in order for your awnings to to operate, they ha you your coach has to have uh, 120 AC power coming into them. So you at least have to have your shore power, generator power, or your inverter uh, on for these to be powered. You have a handheld remote, and then the other remote would be in the overhead. Um, also, they have um, motion sensors on them, so if it gets too windy out, they should retract. They also should retract when you push in your park brake. Down here, we have the buddy screen, which is basically a smaller version of the screen that's on the dash. Uh, it also has controls on it. Uh, where the passenger can control it. This button would be the source button. You can go through, toggle through all the sources. Navigation, auxiliary, HDMI, the main screen. You can dim the screen. You can also go directly to navigation. You can go to directly to the camera screen and you can toggle through the different camera settings. And then it also has a settings, just like the dash. You can adjust the position of it. And it has a power button. Down below that, we have the patio lights. Now we have them where you can have the, the patio light on white. You can also have it on amber. We have the map light, which is the light directly above the passenger seat. You have a momentary ceiling light, which will turn on or off just the ceiling lights in the coach. There's a step cover switch. Pressing it forward, runs it all the way up. You want to hold down on the button until it stops moving, then you know you're all the way up. And then to run it back in, hold on the switch till it goes all the way back in. 
Next is the visor, which would be the passenger window visor. And we have a phone charger. And then the switches down below here would be the battery disconnect. When you press the battery disconnect, it will disconnect most of the 12 volt power in the coach, but not all of it. So you will have some other um, sources of, of 12 volt power that can drain the batteries. Down below here, we have the cargo bay uh, lock and unlock switch. Press up to unlock and down to lock. Below that is the step well light switch. And below here is the HWH manual override switch. So if your steps are ever stuck in and you go to open the door and can't get out, you would push the manual override switch and it will manually override any sensors uh, that is telling it not to run out. You just have to be careful that when you run the switch out that there's nothing in the way because the by pressing on the manual override switch that is overriding all the safety sensors on the step. So if you're not careful, you can damage your step if you run it out into a curb or something else. On the passenger seat, the controls down here, this control, if you push forward, moves the seat forward, push it back, takes it all the way back. You can also raise and lower the seat by pressing up and down, tilting it. Um, these three buttons here, first one is going to be the passenger footrest. Push up to run it out, push down to run it in. The driver's side footrest uh, also has this switch, but it can't be in the driver's position uh, to run the footrest out. So you have to um, pivot the driver's seat for the footrest to work. Second one is going to be the backrest. You want to make sure that your seat's up far enough that it's not going to hit it's not going to hit the uh, slide out in the back. And then the third switch would be the lower back lumbar. Pressing up is going to inflate it and then pressing down is going to deflate it. Uh, the next switches are going to be the heat and the cool switches. Uh, the first one that we have is going to be the heat. Uh, pressing up is going to be at the hottest setting. Middle is off and then pressing down is going to be the lowest setting. The second one is the cooling feature. Pressing up is going to be the highest setting. Center is off. And then the lowest setting would be all the way down. Basically, the passenger and the driver's seats are the same, except for uh, the driver's seat does have that lockout on the footrest. Uh, the driver's seat also has the haptic feedback feature. Uh, when you cross a center line or the side white lines, that it will give you the vibrating feature uh, in the seat from the mobile eye. Also on the seats, you have a remote uh, for the vibration, the controls. Um, you have different zones on the seat uh, for the different massage 
Uh, you have different selections. You can go through pulse, wave, and zigzag, and different intensity settings. Also on the side of the seat, there's a lever so you can pivot the seat and turn it back around. You just have to make sure you watch out for the clearance of the arms. The controls still work when you pivot it. And you can pivot it back and it locks into place. Uh, next on the passenger seat, on the armrest, we have a tablet holder, which is found in your kitchen drawer. Simply put in there and it will hold your tablet. Okay, over here we have our warning stickers uh, and we have our KIB LCD screen, uh, which on the LCD screen controls uh, all the lighting up in front here. These are location specific. Uh, if we go to the home screen, uh, it shows uh, all the features that controls. We have the lighting, which we were just at. We can control the shades. We can do all kitchen living room day shades, all kitchen living room night shades. Uh, we go to the overhead fans. We can control the kitchen overhead fan, master bath in the stool room. Uh, we have an on off switch. You have the rain sensor override. Uh, and then also the high, medium and low speeds of the fan itself. If you want to go into rain sensor override on the kitchen screen or kitchen fan, you would press the rain sensor override. Once you turn the fan back off, it resets the rain sensor override so it's not always on. Go back to home screen, go to systems. You can turn your water pump on and off from here start and stop your generator, your TV lift or televator, run it up or down. And then theater mode, which will run all your shades down and turn your light, most of your lights off, and but, run the up. and run the televator up, but it only works in one direction. When you hit theater mode again, it doesn't revert back to where everything was. Then we have monitor panel, which shows your AC leg one, leg two. Also shows the battery values of the house and the chassis and shows your three tanks, your fresh, gray, and black tank. Go to window awnings. You can control your bedroom awning your dresser window awning, living room window awning, kitchen window awning, in or out, and then also turn the lights on or off. Uh, display brightness. Also, the lightings have uh, faders. We can fade them up or down through all the lights. If we go to the home screen, we also have the I button. So if you have any questions on how to run any of the systems, that are on the KAB panel, uh, we will, we can go to, we'll use lighting for example. If we go to lighting, 
this will give an, a brief explanation of how to use the different lighting functions inside. The arrow at the bottom, if you press that, it goes to the next page. You can press the other arrow to go back and then home button to get out. Down below the LCD screen, we have a outlet, uh, which also has USB charging ports. Um, if you need to charge your phone from there, instead of using the phone charger on the passenger console. Over here, we have a cabinet with some storage, but also has a access port if you need to manual, manually retract your HWH slide out. Over here is another uh, KIB LCD screen. Back here is another outlet. Push down on the button, pops up. Push down on the button to push it back in. We also have the televator back here. You go to systems, hit TV lift up. Okay, if you want to do a channel search, uh, if you're doing live over the air channels, you want to make sure you go up to your overhead and turn on the WineGuard Razor uh, antenna. If you're doing a channel search for uh, cable uh, from the campground, you want to make sure that the WineGuard Razor is off because you can't have two uh, both because you can't have both sources uh, coming through at the same time. So if we're doing a live over the air search, we'll go to the home page on the TV, main screen, click over to settings, enter the settings, go down to broadcasting, go over to auto program. Okay. Go back here. Okay. Uh, from the home screen, we will click over to the settings, hit enter, go down to broadcasting. Then you want to go over to auto program, enter auto program, and then hit enter for start. And it's going to ask you if you want to do both air or cable. Right now we want to search for air stations. So we hit enter and it's going to go through and search for all the air stations. So right now we're inside a building, so we're not going to be picking up any channels. Uh, but if you wanted to search for cable channels, you would just click on the cable and search for your cable channels there. Once you're done, you can either scan again, change the settings or close, and then we'll close, and then go back to the main screen. We have another outlet over here. Press the button to have it come up, press the button to come down, and then we have our motion sensor uh, enabled for the courtesy lights. When you turn the uh, courtesy light sensor on, um, when you walk through the coach, they will automatically turn the courtesy lights on when uh, you walk by this, and then they time out. If you want to turn it off, you just simply press the button. Let me go to the sofa. If you want to get to the hide a bed part, take the cushions off. Pull up on the seat. Let's 
with the legs down here. Push the back down. Over here we have a kitchen overhead cabinet. Uh, we have the black bag in here with all the manuals. Uh, we also have a tablet inside here. It comes with every King Air. And then on this cabinet door, we have the information um, with the paint colors. Uh, you also have a sticker with all the information, uh, your coach number, the VIN, um, and your uh, GVWR, um, all that information's on this. Back here we have an outlet. If you push down on it, it'll pop up. There's also another one located in this corner. This faucet is for the Aquasense uh, filtration system, which is located in the bay door uh, right behind the front driver's side axle. You also have the sink covers, which can be stored down here in this cabinet. You have a trash can down here. You also have a rack and a drawer on this side. So the kitchen faucet, you have the uh, heat control for cold and hot. You also can pull out the head of it and it has a switch on top for the sprayer. Then we come over to the induction stove top, which the covers have cutting boards on the back. The main thing about the induction Stove top is you have to have the correct magnetic cookware for it to operate. So right now we have the hot surface indicator light on, which basically lets you know that the surface is hot because we were cooking something and you don't want to put the covers back on until that hot surface indicator goes off. Um, to turn it on, simply press the on button but to actually get to heat up something, you have to have the correct cookware uh, to cook on this. We can turn it off, we can turn it on, and then also the lock button, which you hold down on the lock, and it locks it. And then to unlock it, press down on the lock and hold, and unlocks it. Right here we have kitchen drawer. This has a lot of the uh, Numar accessories that will come with um, your coach. Um, in here we have the induction uh, stove cleaner. We also have an extra set of keys for the coach. We have remotes for the Bose uh, sound, sound wave, uh, sound bars. There is a Allen key inside this envelope for an awning manual retract. 
If you ever get in a situation where your your awnings are stuck out, there is a uh, cover button in the center of each one of the main awnings. You take out the, the button, put this down inside there, and then you can run manually run your awnings back in. We also have a awning limit adjustment tool. You have a thumb drive for your Girard awnings. Extra batteries for your key fobs. And then we have the TV remotes and they are location specific. So we have one for the front TV, exterior, and the lift TV, and then also the bedroom TV. There is a paint touch-up kit. Remote for the fireplace in the bedroom. Gerard awning remote. And then you also have a universal remote. Here is a key for the Wolf wine cooler. These are the personal comfort remotes for the beds. And these are the drain valves for the mattresses. Uh, here we have the tablet holder. We have filter wrenches for the whole house filter and for the uh, filter, uh, the UV filtration system on the exterior. And this would be a wrench for the hubcaps on the tires. We have an optical cable. And then we also have this little tool that goes up into the ceiling panels so you can uh, clean out your air filters. And an extra HDMI cable. Down here is the Fisher Paykel dishwasher. You have all the settings over here on the side on off switch um, you go through all the settings to do whatever cycle you want if you want to lock it for travel hold down on the lock button until it beeps twice close it to open it knock three times And then it's reset itself. This drawer, we have the coffee maker accessories for the Wolf coffee maker. Another drawer for storage and a heat convector down below here for the furnace heat. Back here is another LCD screen for the kitchen. Also location specific. This screen works pretty much like the other screens. There are a few uh, uh, things on here that are location specific, but for the most part works like all the other screens. Uh, up here we have the microwave, which has a button to open it. Here on the right side and on the left side also a button the same button closes it uh, in the event that you lose power to the uh, opening mechanism you can manually open and close the door uh, 
Then we have the Viking microwave with some accessories that come along with it. Refer to your owner's manual for direction on this. Over here is the wine glassware rack. And below is the Wolf coffee maker. So you bring this out, simply pull it out. You can access the power button on the side, the right side over here. Turn it off and on. It also has a travel latch for the door. Uh, panels up here that lift off. Uh, you can refer to your owner's manual. To operate this, press it back in. Down below here, we have another drawer for storage. And below here, we have the Wolf Dual Zone Wine Cooler. Over here, we have the theater seats. Uh, they have the theater controls up here on the cup holders. Uh, the first two are to control the position of the seat to run it out. The second one runs it in. The third button is for the seat heat. Turns off and on. Fourth button would be for the massage. Has three different intensities, and then the last button would be for the cup holder lights. Also, on the inside here, this panel lifts up. You have a AC outlet with two USB charging ports. Over here, we have the dinette. Dinette table pulls out. There is a leg that you pull down, magnetically sticks up to the top, and then there are panels in the rear that you can install into the top of the dinette table. Push it back in. There's also folding dinette chairs that are normally stored underneath the bed. Two of them. And then each one has a drawer for storage underneath. Here we have the Viking refrigerator freezer. To turn it on, on the inside top panel here, hold on the button for at least three seconds. Also in here we have the water filter. The cold water drink dispenser. Water filter. Also, there's an owner's manual in here. And a travel latch. 
that Newmar installs, you want to slide it all the way to the left to lock the doors so they don't come open in transit. Open it back up. Down here's the freezer. We have the ice maker over on the left side. Storage on the right. Storage down below. Over here is the walk-in pantry. We have the pocket door. Pantry doors that you push to open for more storage. Over here we have the appliance garage where you open the doors and you push the doors back. And there is an outlet right up underneath here. doors for storage down here we have the intervac uh, vacuum system uh, this is the cover that you would plug in your vacuum hose On this end, you have a remote on-off switch. The remote on-off switch is actually battery powered. Where you can turn it off and on without it plugged in. So you wanna make sure that you store this where nothing hits the button and inadvertently turns on your vacuum. You can also turn on the vacuum by opening that up, sweeping in the debris, and then turning it back off. And then you also get a, an accessory bag, which is usually stored down in the basement area of your coach. Okay, here we have the Silverleaf uh, monitor panel. And right now we're on the home screen. Uh, right now we have uh, fresh water, black water, and gray water tank values up here. They're red in percentages. Down below that, you have the house battery percentage for the lithium batteries. Uh, both battery banks, number one and number two, both at 99% right now. And then you also have the chassis battery uh, value in voltage. And right now it's at 12.9. Down below the house and chassis battery values, we have the icon that shows when you are connected to shore power or generator. Right now we are on shore power and it's showing our amperage and voltage values on leg one and leg two. Right now on leg one, we have 46 amps uh, and one, 116 volts. In leg two, we have 35 amps that we're drawing at 117 volts. From here, we can go to AC power page. And this shows the same value from the shore power of leg one and leg two that we saw on the previous screen. We have 46 amps and 36 amps. Uh, and then on um, the voltages, 116, and 117 volts. Down below that is the max charger draw. This is the maximum amps that your charger will draw. And then we have inverter one, which right now is off. So we can turn that on. And inverter two, both are in standby right now. Um, they're on the on off button. Uh, we recommend to leave them on in case your 
shore power or generator goes out, uh, you will still have uh, constant power inside your coach. If you go to the load shed settings, these are load shed values. Um, we don't necessarily recommend changing anything in these. These are already preset when they leave Numar. You can also view your load status in here. When something is shed, or if you lose power, um, it will go through here and show that which values are being shed. Um, so right now we have everything, we're all powered up, everything's okay. Uh, but if we happen to be consuming too much power, the first one to go would be the engine heater. Then we would have the water heaters go and it goes down the list that way. On the max charger draw, if you happen to be in a situation where you need to plug into something that is lower than 30 amps, you would need to change this value. Uh, you would have to go to load shed and then go down to capacity single phase and turn this down to 15 or 20 amps, whatever you need to get it at, and then go back. But we don't recommend having that on all the time. Normal use would be at 30 amps. Okay, if you go down to the DC power page, the top battery icon shows the temperature of both battery banks. Battery bank one would be 73 degrees, battery bank two would be 77. Right now our chargers are in bulk charge. The first one is putting out 67 amps, and the second one is putting out 144 amps right now. Also shows them at 99% charged. On the battery charging, right now the arrows are going towards the battery, which means we're charging. If there was ever a time when we didn't have generator power or shore power, and we were running off inverted power from the batteries, the arrows would be going the other direction uh, to the inverters and chargers uh, when we're actually taking from the batteries. The button below this would be the house disconnect switch or the salesman switch. And then down below here would be the settings switch for charger one and charger two. And these settings, we don't recommend changing any of these. They're already preset when your coach leaves Newmar. Unless you're having a problem and you need to be directed uh, on the phone by a technician or a technician comes out to change those. Down below that we have the generator page or the AGS. The top two buttons we have a manual start and a manual stop for the generator. We have runtime hours, the RPM for the generator, and the temperature. Also over here, we have the activity flags, which won't allow your AGS to start. So before any of your AGS values uh, can start the, the generator, you have to make sure all the activity flags are cleared out. You have an activity flag for starting and stopping the generator, also with the manual flag, safety switch, that is when your gen slide is ran out. Uh, it's there to keep any technicians that might be working on the generator from the generator accidentally starting while they're out there. And then you have a quiet time safety flag, uh, which your AGS will not start during quiet time. Then we have AGS settings. <clears throat> Down below that, if we had a uh, if we had AGS enabled for the battery, uh, for the chassis, 
uh, for the climates, living room, kitchen, bedroom, or an exerciser, they would be highlighted. And you can go into those settings to enable those. So right now, all of our activity flags are off. Battery auto charger is disabled, but we can change that to enable. And if we go back, it shows that the batteries are enabled under the AGS. If we go to the next screen, this shows our trigger state of charge. Basically when the AGS is gonna to start to enable, um, you can also enable the climate for the living room, kitchen, and the bedroom for the AGS through here. All you do is press change, press change to go back, and then chassis battery auto charger. You can turn that on as well, off. You can change the settings, but we don't recommend changing these settings. These are all preset. So on this page, we have the scheduled exercise, which basically means that if your coach, if you need to exercise your generator uh, once a week, which we recommend, if you're not, not using it, you can schedule it through here. Uh, you can enter the time, the duration of how long it runs, and then also the day that you want it to run. Also with the AGS, we do not recommend to have any AGS enabled if your coach is in storage inside. The exhaust can ruin your coach. We go down to the water page. Here we have three icons, each of the three tanks, the fresh, black, and the gray and they show their percentage values. On the fresh tank, if it gets down below 25%, it's going to turn red as an alarm. The black and the gray, once they get past 75%, will turn red as an alarm, or I'm sorry, the black and the gray will turn orange as an alarm, and then at 100%, they, the black tank will turn red, and you will no longer be able to flush your toilets. We have a water pump on off switch. And below that we have the autofill. Right now it's off. So to, so to turn the autofill on, press on, it goes to on and ready. And then if your hose is connected to the city supply, and you hit top off now, you can fill it back up to 100%. Otherwise, if you are on on and ready and you're connected to city supply water, if your fresh tank gets down below 90%, the autofill will kick on and fill up to 100% and then shut off and keep maintaining those percent values. Next we have the climate screen and you can control the temperature, uh, all the zones from this one page or this, this one home page. If we want to cool the whole coach, we could hit cool. We see a snowflake icon come up and we can adjust the temperature with these arrows. That would be our temperature setting and 73 degrees is our current temperature. Also on this page, you can go to individual uh, rooms. So you can go to the living room, kitchen, bathroom, and the bedroom. We also have the Oasis page, which is only on this page. Down here we have cool, auto, and heat. Cool and heat are pretty self-explanatory. Auto would be a function if we go into auto 
it's going to maintain one temperature setting at all times, whether it goes into cooling or heating. Also, if we go into individual zones, we can control those individual temperature settings. But what you can't do is cool up front in one zone and heat in the back in another. The bathroom doesn't have a, a cooling or heating zone per se. It basically turns off and on the heat convector that's inside the bathroom. Basically, if it gets, starts getting too hot in there, you'd want to turn that off. Also, you can, from each individual zone, you can enable the AGS for climate. So in the living room, we can enable the AGS. We can disable it. And then you also have the fan speed. You have forced high, forced low, and then back to auto. When you're cooling in the living room and it says wait, that means your AC is waiting to, for the compressor to start running. You'll hear the fans run and then when the compressor kicks on and everything starts cooling in, your snowflake will turn blue. It's about a two minute delay be between setting changes. Okay, if we go to the heating side, if we go back to the all, and we go to oasis, we have the, the source for heat, which would be, right now it's on heat pump. We can change that to oasis or the furnace only. We can have both of them on, the heat pump and the oasis or automatic. That would be on automatic heat pumps are your primary heat source and the Oasis is your secondary heat source. So automatic would mean that the heat pumps kick in first and if they can't provide enough heat then the Oasis automatically turns on and starts providing more heat. Then we have the on off switch for the Oasis burner Right now it's off, we can turn it on. And then we have the electric element one, and electric element two for the Oasis. They're both on, you can turn them off and on from here. And then over here, lets you know if you have any zone faults. Uh, also lets you know uh, AC available which means there's AC available for electric element one and electric element two. And it's fine to have all three of those on at the same time. Also, we recommend if you're showering to at least let your burner cycle. Uh, and then when it turns off, uh, you start a shower and you should have um, uh, enough hot water for a, for a whole shower. Go to back. If we want to turn on the heat, we go to heat. Right now we're on Oasis only, so the 
once the heat turns on the flame icon, that should turn our temperature up. That should turn blue for the oasis and then red for the heat pumps. Down here we have the scheduling icons where you can schedule your temperatures for the day, night, return, away, and you can hold on the heat. This button is for the block heater, turning it off and on. You have to be plugged into shore power or generator for this to work. Next is the batteries. This one show this page shows pack one of the batteries. They go to pack two. Pack one shows the current, the state current, the state current charger one. These would be the amp hours, amp hours of battery pack one, battery pack two shows the amp values, the voltage values, and the wattage. Also shows charger one at 14.3 volts, charger two, 14.4, and then shows the temperature of the battery values, temperature of the bays, and any faults that you would have would come up on here. Also, over here is an off button for the BMS, but we don't want to do that right now. So unless you really have to, do not hit that button. So we want to hit, oops, go back. And we can, and both pages have those. You can turn pack two BMS off on this screen also. Okay, we go over to coach mode. So coach mode will automatically change settings in your coach to whatever whatever situation that you're camping in. We have active camping, outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, indoor unplugged, and indoor plugged in. Once you make a selection on a button, you have to press activate to activate everything. Once, once you hit activate, the activated setting will be highlighted and then also all the check marks will let you know what has also been enabled or disabled. So we have on this one disabled inverters, enabled the chargers, enabled the autogen, and enabled the Oasis burner for outdoor unplugged. If we go down to indoor unplugged or indoor plugged in, You'll notice that if we hit activate, it'll automatically disable uh, not only the inverters, the chargers, but it also disables the autogen and the Oasis uh, for safety reasons. Same for indoor plugged in. Disables the autogen and the Oasis. Over here we have the floor heat page. Each one of these represents a zone. We have the front, mid, and rear zone. You can change the values by swiping up or touching or hitting the arrow buttons. Right now front zone is all the way up to 10. These don't have temperature values the numbers go off a, uh, I believe it's a seven minute cycle. So on a 10, the cycle would be seven minutes on, where if you had a 
five, it would be like four minutes on, three minutes off. Same thing for the mid and the rear. One thing to note, you get these down one below one is in store mode, which is actually off. It's the same as off. No. Over here we have the awnings button from here. You can operate your main entry awning, front main awning, rear main awning, the living room window awning, kitchen window awning, bedroom window awning, and dresser window awning. And you have to hold on the button for them to continuously run. You can't just press and let off run. Uh, we go to vent fans. These would be the fantastic fans. One's in the kitchen, one in the stool room, one in the master bath. We go to the kitchen one. It's basically the same controls that are on the KIB wall screens. You have your fan on off, the speed setting, high, medium, and low, and the rain sensor override, which automatically resets when you turn it off. So we also have the master bath and the stool room. Door locks page. Go to the entry door. We can to toggle the entry door lock. Unlock. Lock. Same way with the cargo doors. Lock. And unlock. And we can lock all an alarm. We have to make sure we have all our doors closed. If the alarm ever goes off on you, uh, just toggle the entry door lock switch and it'll automatically turn off the alarm. Also on the alarming of the system, if you alarm the system, you have to make sure that if you're inside the coach, that in the front overhead above the driver's seat, you have the motion sensors turned off. Otherwise, it will set off the alarm uh, if they're still active. And if the alarm does go off, just make sure you toggle the entry door lock or unlock and that'll automatically uh, turn off the alarm. Also your key fob will turn the alarm off too, if you have that handy. Go to shades and TV lift. Or in the living room shade, you can operate the kitchen, living room, day shades, uh, the night shades, uh, dinette, living room, forward, uh, the back living room, individual night and day shades from here. You also have theater mode, the TV lift up and down. Each one of these is going to have in all shades of day or night that you can run up and down, plus individual ones, the bedroom, the bathroom, and the half bath. Um, if we go to the lights page, same thing with this, you can turn on individual lights. You can turn on all the living room accent lights, you can turn them all off uh, by this 
switch down here on or off or you can also use a slider to do individual lights or all the lights in the coach you have courtesy lights off uh, all lights on and all lights off in the coach when you turn all lights on that doesn't turn all the lights on that will just turn all the ceiling lights on and you can go through each individual zone and turn on any lights that you want to. Also with the exterior, you have the passenger and driver security lights along with the living room, kitchen, bedroom and dresser window awning lights. Also, we have this light icon here where you can dim the screen, also turn it back on. And then you have the configuration wheel icon up here. But we actually don't recommend changing any settings in this page, except for maybe if you need to set the clock, which is in here. And from here, you can set the clock with these arrow icons, if it's in manual, but if you want to have so it's automatically set by the GPS, go to miscellaneous settings, then go to time zone handling, and for manual, you'd want to switch it to auto. Go back to set the clock. Now it's in auto, and all those arrow icons have disappeared. Okay, up here we have another uh, motion sensor enable switch, which enables the uh, courtesy lights out in the, in the coach on the floor. Below here we have another KAB LCD screen, which is pretty much the same as all the other LCD screens. It is location specific for this because it has uh, the ceiling lights for the bathroom, vanity lights, the accent lights, mirror lights, and also courtesy lights. Go to the home screen, it also has the uh, lighting, the shades, the fans, the systems, uh, monitor panel, and window awnings, and display brightness like the other ones do. Um, but it's different about hit the wrong button. What's different about this one is in the systems page you can control the heater fan on the inside of this bathroom to turn it off or on when the rest of the heat on the oasis furnace system is enabled only okay over here we have the stool room sink faucet you actually turn it on by twisting the bottom portion and the hot and cold is adjusted by the top knob Right now it had winterizing fluid in it since it's pink. Up here is the mirror. With the medicine cabinet on the inside. And then another cabinet with a hidden GFI down on the side. Okay, so down here we have some cabinet doors, a drawer, and then also the Dometic touch panel flush for the toilet, which has two buttons on it. You have a flush and an add water button on it. You also have two modes for the toilet, the water saver and the normal mode, and to switch in between both the water saver and the normal mode hold down on the hold down on the flush button until it flashes that will switch you in between normal mode and water saver mode Then 
And up here in this cabinet, we have the electrical panel in here, which we have our main breaker. We have our cooktop, the dryer, the trailer, the washer, freezer, AC. We have water heater, rear air AC, uh, other water heater, which would be in the Oasis. We have a floor heat breaker, inverter, fireplace, second inverter, engine block heater, dishwasher, floor heat, and the pressure washer. And then these two sub panels each, each go to one of the inverters. This would be inverter one, which has the first breaker would be the main, second would be the microwave, front air, driver side slide out, and the passenger side slide out. And inverter two sub panel, you have a 30 amp main breaker, and then the refrigerator, mid air, the bed bath basement circuit, coffee maker, and the beverage center is all on inverter two. Over here we have the floor heat GFIs. <clears throat> if you ever lose floor heat, check these first. A lot of times these will trip and then you don't have floor heat. Um, so check these first. These will supply the power to the uh, floor heat. And we also have a fuse panel over here, which has your TV accessories, this panel here explains all the fuses that are on here. You have extra fuses in this fuse panel. And then down here, you have two resettable fuses for the each toilet. If you happen to have a breaker that's tripped, it'll be about halfway up when you come here and look at it. Main thing that you have to do is you have to pull it all the way back down to turn it off and then push it all the way back to turn it back on. So back here we have the bathroom window. Pull the flap back. You can pull the window back. You have a screen here. And if you don't want a screen, you can push the flap forward and close the screen to close, push it back, push the flap back over and locks it into place. Okay, over here we have the bedroom kitchen pocket door. The latch right here. You can close the door. And it latches up at the top. Push it closed. The latch it again. This is where we recommend keeping it for travel. Over here beside the bed, we have the nightstand, which has a phone charger on top. Open the door, you have storage inside, also an outlet. And on both sides of the bed, you have a KIB LCD screen, which operates all the lights in the bedroom and over the, the bed itself. The bed overhead cabinet, have storage space, also have an outlet in the back and on both sides, of the overhead there is a port for CPAP machines you have the shades behind the bed the big shade is a motorized shade and the two side blackout shades are manual shades pull down to move them Also, the bed lifts up for storage. Down here, we have the two dinette chairs. And on the other side, we have the dinette leafs for the inside. On the right side of the bed, another nightstand, phone charger, storage, and another outlet on the inside. We also have a pocket door from the bathroom to the bedroom. 
Operates the same way as the other pocket door. Push it closed for travel. And then we also have our tool for removing the filters in the heating ducts. You basically take the tool, go up into the square, pull it down. Oh, there we go. Move the square. On the back of the square is the filter. It's on there held by Velcro. Take the filter off, clean it out with either compressed air or wash them, but then let them fully dry. Put the square back up, it's held with magnets. This is found in the kitchen drawer. Also repeat that for each one of the square vents on the passenger side. They all have filters in them all the way through the coach. Up here we have a CO detector. You wanna make sure you check the batteries in all of your smoke alarms and CO detectors. You have one in the bedroom and then one up front in the cockpit area. Over here we have the bedroom slide out switch. Up would be in, down would be out. Below this we have another silver leaf screen. Same screen that we have over by the mid bath and then another motion sensor enable switch. Turn it on, turn it off. We have another wardrobe cabinet. In here we have our AV connections, one for the um, rooftop satellite dish. And then we also have an HDMI cable going uh, from the TV to if you need to plug in a uh, satellite receiver or a DVD player. You have outlets in the back there. Um, we have the Cat6 cable going from the front satellite uh, switch from up front to back here. This side, we have another wardrobe storage cabinet. We have the TV. More outlets on the countertops. One over here. We also have the, we also have the fireplace with the remote or the touch panel here. You can turn it on. You can go through the different light settings, turn the heat on, go through different temperature settings. The fireplace also has a safety feature that when the slide out is all the way in, it will cut power to the outlet because it is so close to the bed. And we also have the drawers for the wardrobe. They're all soft clothes. If you need to remove a drawer, there's a little tab on each side. You push the right side down and the left side up and just pull the drawer out. And then to reinstall it, just put the drawer guys right back in the track. And push in. So here we have the rear bath shower. Uh, we have several dials here. The bottom one is for switching between the water supply for the shower and recirculating to the aquamizer. And if I go over to the panel over here on the LCD screen and I go to home, 
and I go to systems and then I go to aquamizer we get a blue light over here which lets me know that my water is not up to temp yet so what we would do is turn this dial over to aquamizer and what that's going to do is circulate the water through the system back into the fresh water tank. Now, if you're not connected to any city water supply, it's just going to recirculate the water from your tank up here back to your tank. But if you are connected to city water and you use the aquamizer, it's going to take water from the city supply and put it into your, go through here and send it into your freshwater tank which gives you the possibility of overflowing your freshwater tank if you leave this on too long. So once, once we get up to temperature, this light will turn red and then you'll instantly have hot water coming out of the shower. So this will be your temperature dial. There's a button on the bottom, you push up and you can turn for hot, turn it the other way for cool. And then these would be the selector between your shower head, which is over here, and the shower wand. Just push in. Up above that would be the selector for the shower head on the different settings coming out of the top of the shower. You have three settings. You also have a seat shower seat that folds down fold back up and you have shampoo and conditioner dispensers you close the door you have a travel lock on the door you want to make sure it's closed in transit over here we have bathroom cabinet doors, we have storage in here. We also have the AV section part where you have two splitter boxes in there, one for the DVD Blu-ray players, the other for the satellite. You have Cat6 cables in there and IR emitters. There's also a storage bin down below here. Lift out this access panel. Down below here we have drawers. The bathroom heat convector, an outlet, more bathroom door drawers. Access to the P trap and other plumbing lines. More drawers for storage and another outlet up here in the vanity the doors open we have an outlet back here And we also have the KIB lighting system control uh, unit back behind this panel. If a technician ever needs to get back there and diagnose anything, any issues going on with your KIB system, your lighting system. LCD screen panel, and then also another one of the motion detector courtesy light switches. Over here in this cabinet, we have the wall safe. 
and there is a key and the instructions to program the the code in your black bag for the wall safe another storage area and then back here we have the egress door which has two locks on it one is a deadbolt lock you can unlock that and the other is a handle lock if we unlock that one the door opens push it all the way open it locks into place pull the panel off in case of emergency pull the strap and let the ladder go down When closing the egress door, it has two travel latches. The first one, just like the entry door, the first one will close it and keep it closed, but it's not closed all the way. You want to make sure you slam it into the second latch, dead bolt it, and then lock the handle. Down here we have the Dometic, uh, we have the Dometic touch panel. Uh, operates the same as the mid bath touch panel and then over here we have a door for access to the back of the washer and dryer uh, for the hot and cold valves and the outlets there's the samsung washer and dryer On off switch. You can refer to your owner's manual for operation on these. And then down below, we have another storage drawer. Up above here, we have a fantastic fan. Yet there are three of them in the coach. To pull these access panels down, you simply just pull down. There is a tiny fuse up here in case your fan ever doesn't run. You can pull this fuse out here. You can also manually open up the fantastic fan. You'll have to turn it on at the LCD switch to have the fan turn on. And close it. And then reinstall the panel. Up here in the ceiling panel is where you can access the AC filters in the rear. Here's the AC filter here. It's held up by Velcro. Just pull it down, clean it out, and reinstall it. Down here we have the engine access cover. Uh, if you ever need to do maintenance on the engine, you have to remove this cover by pulling up these black plugs and then take a 3 8 driver and remove the lags in each one of the plugs and then pull this cover up. This one would have floor heat on it, so it's going to be plugged into a mat. So you have to make sure that you unplug the floor heat at the connection. When accessing the rear engine uh, cover here, one thing you have to do is remove this panel. And that'll give you access to the back of the access panel. And also the floor heat, you can disconnect over there that's connected into the mat of the engine access cover and then just reinstall and plug in the floor heat after you're finished right here we have the switch for to run the gen slide out 
press press up, runs the gen slide out. Inside the gen, gen slide area, we have the Oasis fuel filter. We have the windshield washer reservoir. Uh, and we also have a 12.5 Cummins generator. On the generator, uh, up here we have um, the 50 amp two pole, pole breaker. Uh, so if you ever are running your generator and you're not getting um, AC power on the inside, first thing to do would be check this breaker. You can also start it from the outside here. Uh, press start on the button. And to stop it, press and stop. Down here we have the hour meter. So right here we have the uh, coolant fill and also you can check the coolant level through this window here. And then on the side is the access panel. To get in to check the oil, the dipstick, and then you have the oil fill. You also have the air filter back here and a fuel filter down there for service. So right here we have an auxiliary air port. You can plug into the main air system. Uh, you also get a uh, yellow hose that can be plugged directly into there if you need air to air up anything. Or you can also uh, plug into there if you need to air your coach up to be towed. So the air coming from this port is supplied from the engine compressor. So you have to have your engine running. Otherwise you'll run all the air out of your system if you're using this. And over on this side, this is the HWH pump assembly. We have the reservoir pump or the reservoir back here. If you need to fill your HWH fluid, the fill cap, take that off you'd have to run your jacks up and your rooms out to get the correct level. And then as long as the oil level comes to the bottom of this cap, the bottom of that cap at least, then you know you're full. Also on both sides in here, there's a drain tube that comes from the gutter. We have the blind spot detection sensor. There's also two more, three more sensors down the side of the coach and basically detects any, uh, any objects on the side of the coach. And when there are a orange triangle lights up on the mirror. When the orange lights go out, basically you know that there's nothing on the side of your coach uh, that it's detecting. We have up here, we have our headlights. We have our daytime running lights and then our fog lights which when you turn on your bright lights, the fog lights go out. We have the license plate mount here, but you notice it's not in the center because this is where the on-guard collision mitigation sensor is up here. Over here we have the mirror, which if you need to adjust this, there are three Allens up here, or two Allens. No, there three Allens um, that you can adjust and toggle the mirror up here to get it where you need to go. You have the blind spot detection triangle on this side also.
in the center up here, we have the mobile eye sensor. And then up on top, we have the front camera for the 360 view. Okay, here we have the entry door, which there are two locks up here. The bottom one is for the door lock handle and the top is for the deadbolt. The door actually has two latches. This would be the first latch. This would be the second travel latch, which you have to slam pretty hard to get it into. In here is the door handle lock. Push down to lock it. And then up here is the deadbolt. We recommend locking the deadbolt when you're in transit. Keep the door from opening. Also, we have the Trimark grab handle, which has a code. The factory code is 12345. One one, uh, but you'll need to reprogram that after you you get it. Down here we have the door cam, which comes up on your your Xi and your Silverleaf. Um, we have the patio light in there, which could be white. or amber from the switch inside here. Up here we have the HWH entry step. Uh, it's a hydraulic step. If you have the switch on the overhead onto on, your step will run in and out every time you open and close the door. They also have sensors for a shin sensor that will stop. and a curb sensor that will stop the uh, step from running out to keep it from getting damaged. To turn the entry step switch off in the overhead, you can close the door and then the step will stay out. Over here we have the fuel fill. And then we have bay door number one, passenger side. Inside here, we have the step myom for the entry step. And the bag for the vacuum accessories. The bay doors have a closing mechanism that are soft closed. You don't have to slam them, they pull them shut. To open them, press the button. When the buttons are lit up blue, that means they are unlocked. And when the lights are out, that means that they are locked. You can unlock and lock them from your key fob or from the switch in the step well. Or also you can unlock these from the grab handle. Inside here, we have cargo bay tray. You can run it all the way out. And when you run it all the way in, it won't run any further than then it has to, to to clear this door and you can't keep running it that way unless you go over to the other side and run it in. Up here we have the turn screws. In case you have an emergency where you need to run your HWH slide outs in if they're stuck if they're stuck out. Up here we have the exterior TV. the 
TV, the Bose soundbar. TV pulls out. It can pivot. And then it's held in with magnets. And over here is the selector switch for the Bose soundbar. You have TV, off, and then dash radio. If you're gonna to listen to the dash radio out here, you have to have the Excite in house mode on the inside. In this bay, we have another slide tray. We have extra tile for the bathroom and extra tile for the main floor. This is an awning retract rod in case your front entry door awning is stuck out. There's a hole in the side of the, of the awning that you would put that in to retract the awning. Uh, up here we have the first main awning. If you go to your remote, go to channel one, you can run the main awning out. Channel two would be the second main awning, the rear. And then channel three would be the entry door awning. They also have a they also have lights on the awnings where you can turn it on with the awning switch. If you go to channel one and turn the first awning on, you go to channel two and turn the awning light on. And then also on channel three we'll turn the awning light on on the entry, the main entry awning. The two main patio awnings also have motion sensors on them. That won't go run in. Up in the top, in the center of the, both the awnings, in the center of the coach, there are, is a plug uh, where you can remove to put your manual retract tool in. Uh, when you put your tool in there, use like a drill or something to spin it. It'll manu manually retract each one of the awnings. Inside this bay, we have the exterior refrigerator freezer. It's on a tray. Which you can pull out. It has two sides. Each one can be a refrigerator or a freezer. The exterior refrigerator freezer is powered either by 12 volt power, which is plugged in here, or 110 AC power. Up here is the display. It gives our temperature readings on each one of compartments. 
and you can adjust it going through the different settings on here. It's also, it can also be monitored through Bluetooth. Inside here we have the house vacuum system. You can connect the vacuum hose out here in this port, turn it on. You also change the bag from inside here, pull the bag out, put a new one in. Back here we have the Oasis, the hydronic heating system. Okay, so down on the Oasis main panel, we have some lights. The main power light is on the very top, it's a green one. Um, we also have AC light, compressor, fuel pump, combustion fan. Um, and then you also will have some fault lights down below that will turn red. Uh, if you have any fault lights, you can either try and reset it by pushing the reset button or powering off, powering it back on, and see if that fixes it. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to get uh, service uh, service checked out on your, your Oasis system. Up here, we also have a, uh, a zone board. Um, we have the, uh, the pump bypass switch, which needs to be off unless you actually need to turn it on to circulate uh, after um, changing your fluid. But most of the time, you just want to leave that off. Um, but this will also have fault code, fault lights on it, red fault lights um, that lets you know if you have a certain zone or a pump that's uh, that is out. Back inside there, there's an emergency panel if you needed to uh, run your Oasis system and lost um, power on the inside. You can connect to this board right here. Also have another outlet here. Inside here is the um, this would be the tool panel bay. On the other side of that would be the fresh tank, the gray tank, and the black tanks. Inside here, we have one of the BMSs. We also have inverter one and inverter two. We have our main fuses going to the inverters and the BMS. If you'd need to restart one of your inverters, these would be the breaker plugs. Also have an emergency open cable. Pull down on the cable. You can open your door if your door locks or your door won't open or unlock. Back here, we have one of the rear HWH jacks, and then uh, this is one of the docking lights. Inside here is the Def tank, you can fill the def tank from here. You also have air ports going into the air system of the chassis inside here, if you'd need to fill air from the exterior. Back in this bay, we have both chassis batteries. We have the 150 amp 
uh, chassis breaker here and a 200 amp chassis breaker here. This is the switch for the auxiliary air compressor. If your system is not aired up and you need to open up the rear access, you'd simply press the air compressor on Lowering the switch will close the access door. And the air compressor will automatically shut off. You have your air dryer filter, fuel filter for the chassis. Also, we have a fuse panel inside here for the chassis and another chassis uh, uh, breaker or we have a chassis fuse uh, right here. The other thing to note is these two rear doors don't have the soft close mechanism, so you do have to slam these. And in the back here, we have one of the blind spot detection sensors. So back here, we have the uh, engine coolant reservoir. Uh, we have the fill up here. We also have the sight glass. We have another auxiliary air fitting. Uh, we have the engine oil uh, fill. An engine oil dipstick. Up here we have the plug for the block heater. This has to be plugged in. And then you can turn it off and on with the silver leaf. You have your air filter minder, air filter. Down here is the Oasis Reservoir. It shows here you have max fill when cold. That's when you want to check it. Here we have the dipstick and for the Allison transmission. This black tank is the power steering hydraulic reservoir. There's the power steering reservoir dipstick. We have the Voyager camera connection, your hitch, and then also the uh, tow vehicle wire connection and the air brake uh, connection. Um, back here we have the brake light, uh, reverse lights also there. We have the rear camera for the 360 up on top there. And, and then on the very top we have the marker lights. Up here we have the vent for the air filter. Just make sure there's nothing covering the, the, the opening for the air filter. So when you're running your slide outs out, uh, one thing you want to check before you run them out is uh, you want to make sure the reveal gap is fairly even all the way around. Uh, we do recommend running your slide outs out with your coach aired up. Um, usually you don't have any problems when you do that. Uh, the other thing too is uh, up on top we have the we have a false awning. Below that would be the topper awning. When you're running your slide outs in, you wanna make sure you don't have any debris on top of the topper awning fabric. Uh, below that would be the window awning. Uh, also, before running your slide outs out, you wanna make sure that you're clear of any outside obstructions like trees, shore power poles. Uh, also, check your seats. Uh, to make sure that they're not in the way before running your slide out out. Uh, so back here we have another blind spot detection sensor. We have our radiator back here. Uh, right here we have a fill for the def tank. Uh, so we, up here we have the egress door that's in the rear bath, the dryer vent. Here we have 
a storage area for your sewer uh, hose that you can store in there. Docking light, and then another rear jack in the back. Up here is the egress window that's in the bedroom. And then another blind spot detection sensor here. Down here is the exhaust for the Oasis. And inside here is the other electrical compartment where we have the other BMS, which has the on off switch over on the side here. It's lit up in blue. And then we have our main bus bars back here for the positive and negative, the 12 volt system. And we have all our 12 volt fuses here, breakers, fuses, resettable fuses. And over here on this side, we have the panel uh, that explains what each fuse goes to and the amperage on them. So if you blow a fuse <clears throat> and you need to locate it, you just look down on this panel and find the corresponding fuse on the fuse panel. Back here we have the TM1000, which would be the coach management Silverleaf module. And then up here is an, another KIB fuse panel, which powers your Silverleaf. Also powers your charge bridge. And then back here is one of the lithium ion battery packs for this side. This door also has the emergency pull cable down at the bottom. If you need to manually open up your door. Here we have the water bay. Right here is, we have the exterior shower head. Up here is the valve for the exterior shower, the on off. Uh, if you, you can turn it on over here from cold to hot. And we store it back up here. Inside this panel, we have the gray tank rinse port and the black tank rinse port. Uh, we also have the black tank uh, low point drain. If you need to winterize, uh, you'll want to open up the black tank low point and the gray tank low point uh, to drain any any of the water that's left in the the rinse lines. Here we have the main plumbing cold low point drain and the main hot low point drain. Uh, you also need to open these up when you winterize. This is the main house filter. There's a red button on top to release the pressure if you need to take this off. The wrench for this is in the kitchen drawer inside. This filter here is for your main house filter, which goes into this housing. Up here, we have the water bay uh, monitor panel. Uh, it shows your tank values. You have the fresh black and the gray tank, all shown in percentages. You go down to the water menu. Uh, it shows uh, the same uh, menu that's on the inside on the Silverleaf screen for your water pump on off, also for your autofill on off and top off now. You have the light page for the security system, or the security lights on the driver's side and the passenger side, on and off. You can start and stop your generator from here. And you can also tilt your coach when you're draining your black and gray tanks. You have to have your coach running. Um, 
you have to have your coach running for this to work. Also, it only lifts the uh, air system on the uh, passenger side of the coach. You can't be on your jacks when, when you're running uh, the tilt system. We have the black tank switch that opens uh, the main valve that goes into the macerator. Uh, then we also have the, the main switch that goes from the, for the gray tank uh, into the, the macerator. This is the switch for the, for the SantaCon. We have an outside, another uh, water tap here. And then this is the valve for filling your, your freshwater tank. Right now we're on auto tank, uh, auto city supply. So if you, if you want to auto fill your fresh tank, the valve would have to be in this selection. If we move it over to city supply, then we won't be filling the tank. We'll just be strictly getting uh, water supplied from the hose directly in, into the coach. And then if you want to manually fill your fresh water tank, you can turn it to this selection, it'll fill the tank, but you could also overflow it, uh, which it would come out on the other side of the coach in the overflow valve. Down here we have the SantaCon macerator. Before you uh, do your SantaCon, there is a valve back here that you have to open up make sure that the valve back here that uh, goes to the main hose, you have to make sure that that's, that that's open. If you want to run your macerator, take the spin out out. Run your hose through here. Donut fills the hole. You take this cap off and put it into the sewer connection. And then you would open up your black tank valve first. Always, always have the valve open first before you turn on your SantaCon. You never want to run your SantaCon pump dry. Uh, so you would open up the valve, uh, turn on your SantaCon, and then after your black tank is emptied, uh, you would want to rinse your black tank through here and, uh, yeah, rinse your black tank through here. And then after you do your black tank, do your gray tank the same way. Open up here and then rinse. And then over here we have the hose reel connect to your city water pull this out and there's a switch on the side here to retract the hose there's also a cut out there so you can leave your hose out And then inside this panel, we have the cold and the hot mana block. So if you need to isolate uh, one particular plumbing line in your coach, simply turn one of these valves. We have the power washer, stool room, washer, uh, kitchen ice maker, shower, exterior faucet. Up here is the paper towel holder for the seafold paper towels. Take this down. Back here we have a low point drain for the freshwater tank. If you need to drain your freshwater tank. And then also up inside here is a heat convector that will keep this uh, compartment heated in case it gets too cold, but you do have to have your Oasis on uh, for that to run. Uh, to winterize your coach, there are instructions here, uh, printed up here. 
Uh, also, this would be the winterizing hose. Basically, you would uh, open up this hose line, put this into your antifreeze, and then close this line here, which goes directly to your fresh tank drain uh, all the water out of your coach, open up your low point drains, uh, and then start, you turn your water pump on and start pumping the uh, winter, winterizing fluid uh, into, the, into your coach. You wanna make sure you run the winterizing fluid through all your faucets uh, and uh, appliances uh, also, uh, leave some of the winterizing fluid in, in your P-traps so they don't freeze. And run, your to run the winterizing fluid through your toilets. Inside here we have the cord reel for the shore power cord. Down here is the... Uh, uh, Call this yeah here's the park cable connection this outlet here is for your is a 30 amp outlet for your stacker trailer this right here is the transfer switch back here we have a couple silver leaf modules uh, we have a tm250 it's the ac power management module and then the tm 229, which is for the tile floor heat. Down here is uh, the monitor for the transfer switch. Um, and back here is a drop T, one of the main drop T's for the silver leaf CAN bus system. On the cord reel, to run it in and out, you have the switch on the side of the door. You can pull it out and then run it back in. And these two notches, one is for the shore power cord and the other one would be for the 30 amp stacker trailer cord. In here we have another path, we have the other side of the pass through tray. It has limit switches so it'll only come out so far and also it won't go back on the other side to hit the door. And here is another pass through tray. Inside here is the power washer. <clears throat> power washer has on off switch here. Power washer head. Some accessories. There is a GFI plug back here for the power washer, for the power. You plug it in right here. It also has GFI on the plug itself. Here we have windshield washer. And then back here is the UV filtration system. And these are the valves where you can either bypass 
the UV filtration system, or you can open it up. You can also bypass it to when you need to winterize. This would be the shutoff valve to the, uh, the faucet in the main kitchen, kitchen sink. And then this would be the shutoff valve to the refrigerator. Over here we have the fuel fill for this, for the driver's side. Docking light. This is the front electrical bay. Inside here, we have the main KIB fuse panel for the cockpit area. And this is the Spartan fuse panel, the front fuse panel for the cockpit area. This is the, this panel is the has the switch to run the gen slide in and out. Press up to run it out, down to run it in. We also have spare fuses here. And then this module down here controls the memory for the mirrors and the, the pedals and the steering column. 